In today's video, we're going to be reviewing not necessarily a piece of rolling stock, but what lies beneath the piece of rolling stock. I'm talking about Tsunami's sound card decoder. For an MSRP of $42.50 or a three pack for $112.95, we're gonna take a look at what this decoder entails as far as work in order to get it running, the features it has, and see how overall Tsunami's vision of making rolling stock sound work actually plays out on my layout. So with that said, let's get started with the review of the Tsunami sound card decoder right now. Now this review will be mostly audio importance and less of a actual video importance, but there are some things I want to show you. The first thing is we want to talk about how easy it is to install this because after all, these cars aren't equipped with the sound car features. You have to install this yourself. It's a decoder. You might want to get a Keep Alive current keeper with it something like that to keep the uh, current steady. Anyhow, let's talk about what you're gonna install. First of all, you'll have any piece of rolling stock you want. The only thing I could possibly see a problem with is maybe a gondola or something. But this boxcar here is an Atherin 60 foot Gunderson boxcar. The first and most important thing is you're gonna need something to actually pick up power from the track. So you'll need power pickup trucks. So, what I did was the easiest thing. There's people that make their own, but I'm lazy. And I got these power pickup trucks here from Ring Engineering. So that's one option. They're not too expensive. Now, my laziness extended even further because I actually sent this sound car to be done by my friend Mark Preisler at MarksModelRailServices.com. I'll put the link in big graphics below. But he installed this for me for a real good price. He did an excellent job because my schedule is so busy. But honestly, if I could find my soldering iron out of the rubble that is from this move I just had, it's not that difficult. You simply install the decoder. You're going to wire the trucks. They have the wiring diagrams included in the package. Those power pickup trucks, you either create them or install these. You run some wires up. You can probably see on that truck there, the wires are ran up into the body. Going to the decoder, follow the wiring diagram. You're gonna to wanna to drill some small holes in the bottom so the speaker can basically allow the sound to resonate outwards of the piece of rolling stock. And then you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you know how to do real basic soldering and electronics and you'll be covered. It's nothing too difficult to do really. So just make sure that you are able to do that and you could easily install this I would say probably within a half an hour or so for somebody that's not you know a flat-out beginner anyway that's all it takes for installation power pickup trucks basic soldering skills basic wiring skills and you're good to go they have diagrams for you like here's the diagram for example just a real quick example of the current keeper and how it installs in to the decoder and it'll basically make your life easier by following those wiring diagrams if you don't know what you're doing. So that's it for installation. Now let's actually go into operation. One of the first things I want to mention is about the sound. You simply apply track power. The decoder is at the standard address of three and then you are ready to go. For example, just by accelerating Obviously, this doesn't have a motor in it. You can get the clickety clack sound. Also, some wheel flange sound in there. As you increase the speed, I've got 126 speed steps here. Clickety clack increases. So that's just simply the beginning of what this decoder does. Let's talk about a few of the things it does, and then I'll try to cover as many as possible. You got the clickety clack and the wheel flange sound there. <clears throat> you have the, a bell and a whistle and directional lighting, just like a regular decoder. So there's some different sounds you can get that way. And 
you guys have to kind of go along with me because I am experimenting just like you are trying to figure this out as we go along but F1 just like all the other tsunami decoders it has the same functions same CVs so F1 should be a bell of some sort F2 a horn F3 is the short horn of course so you might be asking yourself, why is all this in a sound card decoder? Why didn't they just stick with the clickety-clack and a few other things? Well, you have different type of metro cars and things like that that need those decoders, these type of decoders in them. If they're running backwards, they've got horns and bells going backwards on the back end. Uh, on the unpowered cars sometimes, on a lot of these passenger and commuter trains. So I'm not really familiar with the passenger and commuter trains but I know up in Chicago and stuff like that they've got a lot of that going on so that's why they went ahead and put those in there and then you have the other effects you've got a generator car sound here that's F9 Turn that back off, and then we'll have the. Oops. We'll have to cycle through here, but basically, you've also got the couple and uncouple glad hand release here on F10. F11 applies the brakes. To let off of the brakes and then F12 is a couple of clink. Okay, so those are just the functions, some of the functions. Now, you may also be thinking if you have a lot of these, you know, you don't want to be able to switch from every other car, have to have all the same sounds and things like that. And there's some magnetic tricks to this as well that we're going to get into here in the next segment. Now many of you are interested in the sounds of this sound car, but you're wondering with the 100 plus cars that you could possibly run to be prototypically correct, how are you going to go possibly program all these without just wasting a whole bunch of time? And that's where the magnet comes in. Now this magnet is pretty thin, but we're going to see if it actually works. And you basically wave it across the top of the car. You'll hear the... There we go, that's the handbrake being released. Now I'm gonna hit F4 four, or F8 four times. It's the air releasing. Now I'm hitting F8 four, four, that's, uh, four times on the locomotive. So that's the locomotive number. Now, this should, this is the first time I'm testing it out, be making noises in unison with the locomotive. Now, I've picked a locomotive with no sound so we can focus in on the sounds of the sound car, but here you go. There you have it. Roll flange and clickety-clack. Speed up locomotive. Speeds up the clickety clack. I'm going to go in reverse here. Coming back at you. And just like that, you've got your sound car in unison with the locomotive. So imagine a line of these. I don't have the luxury of having an operating layout right now. We're in the process of rebuilding. <clears throat> However, you can imagine a bunch of these sound cars and you're just simply waving the magnet on down them to get them all on the same page as the locomotive by hitting that F8 button four times. So it's not too hard to do. It solves the problem of having to program each individual sound car. And then you have your sounds in unison. Now, let's say you want to release it from the consist. You don't want that sound car in there anymore. You wave it across again.
There we go. That is the sound of the handbrake being applied. You see those brake wheels at the end of each piece of rolling stock cranking that thing down. Here are the chains. And that is actually a release now from the consist. So now, if I uncouple this locomotive, I can go about my business, take my locomotive away, and my rolling stock's not making noise. So that's pretty simple and a pretty cool feature that really simplifies getting large consists of these sound cars under operation and under control quickly and effectively. There's a little bit more I'd like to show you before I wrap this review up. People have asked about the flat spot sounds. It's pretty simple. You go into CV117, your regular rolling stock is at a value of 244, your rolling stock with a generator is a value of 246. But if you want that flat spot sound versus just the clicky clack you get that we had starting out in this video, you just add one to the value. So for the regular rolling stock, instead of 244, it's now 245. So I've went ahead and programmed CV245, the value of 245, into CV117, and I'll let you listen to the flat spot sound here. some speed. Now that's just obviously going off of decoder number three, the address number three, and actually manually bringing up the speed step so you can hear that without running it back and forth. But there's your flat spot. You don't like it. You go back to the CV programming. You take it out. You put it back to the other numbers. So overall, pretty cool product. Let's go ahead and wrap this review up with my final thoughts on these items and what they can do for the hobby and you. Well that wraps up the review on the Soundtrack Tsunami sound car. MSRP being 4250 or 112.95 if you get a three pack. That is just MSRP. You've got brick and mortar hobby shops, online retailers like trainworld.com that'll get you discounts off that price. Make it a little easier on your wallet when you're trying to make purchases for a long consist. Now let's talk about long consist for a quick second here. The first thing I want to tell you is the spacing is up to you. There's nobody gonna, there's nobody that's going to give you direction on how many cars you need in your consist to have these sounds. It's up to your own ears. If you want one every four or five cars, fine. If you want one every 10 or 12 cars, fine. You know, some people like a lot of noise, some people like a little bit of noise. And there's still those old grumps out there that don't like DCC and sound and locomotives whatsoever. So have it your way. I'm not trying to sound like a Burger King commercial here, but do what you want. Now, with that said, it's a, a couple great features of this sound car. Like I mentioned, the easy intelligent consisting, as they call it, where you just swipe the magnet. Even that thin magnet I've got from my refrigerator worked. So things like that are going to work for you to make it easy. I think it's great that soundtracks nailed down that problem for those guys that want the long consist to make it easy to consist those together. Really smart stuff going on with this product, I think. And it gives us a peer into the future of the hobby. Before you're just working with sound locomotives, but it's not prototypical. In the real world, you hear all kinds of sounds coming from those cars, many of them years and years old, not the best maintained cars in the world, flat spots, wheel flange sounds like crazy, just all kinds of stuff coming from it. Now we can do it here on our model railroad. Is it going to cost you a little bit? Yes. But overall, you've got the easy installation. You've got easy operation. I was a little weary coming into this review, not knowing how to operate this stuff. But overall, it's just like any other soundtracks decoder, plus the intelligent sound, the intelligent consisting makes it easy. So you've got all your functions there. You've got the ability to have directional lighting if you've got one of those passenger cars up in the, I think they're Metro or whatever they're called up there in Chicago area where they're cars that don't have the motors in them but they're running in opposite directions. You've got the 
bell, the horns, and one thing I didn't mention was there's several different horns. So a real good product by Tsunami, or Soundtracks I should say, and it's completely talk, thought through to the 10th degree. You know, there's no room for complaints with this. Everything has been thought about in this product. So it's a real nice product. Be sure to check it out. Obviously lots of places to get them. Like I said, online retailers, brick and mortar hobby shops, or you can look at Tsunami's website for a list of authorized retailers. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with the product. It was easy from unboxing to getting it all set up. And really the installation, even though I didn't do it, my buddy Mark at MarksModelRailServices.com did it for me in the essence of time. It's an easy install. I just can't find my soldering iron, but basic electronics, basic wiring, and you're good to go on those installs, basic soldering skills as well. So overall guys, really impressed with the product. We'll see you next time right here on my channel. Thanks for watching. Take care.